Hey everyone, Kelly here. Welcome to my channel. And I'm editing this video that I recorded a month ago. And I'm just not getting around to it. And the reason for that is I've been really, really busy working on some other projects. But at any rate, this is a little sketchbook I got for Christmas for myself. And I wanted to start playing around with, um, with gouache. So I got some of that Hemi gouache and I decided to do a couple of sketchbook entries with it. The first page is just January and the year. Nothing too fancy, just kind of dipping my toes in the sand or the water or whatever. And I didn't want to do anything too, you know, involved. I just wanted something to just get started. So I thought I would make a little, I wanted to test how opaque and how even this was. So I just put a little bit of a, a border on one side of the page. By the way, something else I discovered was this double stick tape. It's, it's not permanent. It's, it's um, removable. So it's almost like you can make your own um, post-its in a way. So I just put that over the other page so I wouldn't mess up the blank page on the opposite side. And it's also good for masking if you want to mask stuff off. Anyway, it's from Scotch. It's double-sided removable tape. Anyway, here we are talking about the, the gouache. So I got this little Amy 18 color palette and I liked it because it seemed like there were plenty of colors, but uh, if you've seen the ones with 24 or I think they even come as many as 50, those things are huge and I don't want something that's going to take up a lot of space. And I kind of wanted to compare it a little bit to the Windsor and Newton. And I also have some um, Holbein designer squash. Kind of wanted to compare it with those and see how it compared. And I'm not ever going to buy more than 18 different colors in those because it's quite an investment. But for about the price of two tubes of the um, so-called designer or professional gouache, you get tw you get 18 colors and a lot of gouache. And uh, I've seen some artists on YouTube make beautiful Studio Ghibli scenes with it. Just gorgeous. And I figured it's a good way to dip your toes in and see if you like the medium before investing a whole lot in the more expensive gouache. And um, I got it on sale in December. I think I paid $17. That's less than a dollar for every color. Plus you get the palette. And um, so I decided to try some hard edge geometry to, to test it out and see, because most, mostly I want to see how evenly it goes on and how opaque it is and how much gouache do I have to use in order to get, the, get that nice solid effect, that opaqueness that I'm looking for. So um, I'm taping this off. And one way, there was a movement in the 60s, I think the 60s, the 1960s, uh, maybe through like the 80s. It was hard edge abstraction or hard edge geometric abstraction. It may have even been earlier than that. I, I don't do very well with the dates. But they would tape it off and they would get these really sharp, hard edges. And... Um, so that's what I'm doing here. And I want to see just really, can I mix the colors? Like, can I, can I mix a green right on the paper? You know, if I just pull some yellow and some blue, can I mix it right there on, on the paper? And it turns out you can. I think you could actually get away with just using three colors, but unfortunately it's a real pain in the neck to buy these separately. And I went through quite a lot of paint when I was doing this, uh, more definitely more than you would with the more expensive 
designer gouache that comes in tubes. Uh, so it turns out those convenience colors, they look pretty much like what I mixed, you know, depending on how much, how, how far I, I went toward yellow green or how far I went toward uh, blue green. But if I mixed a real middle green, I, it, it kind of matched the color that was in there for convenience and same with the purple. So, um, those convenience colors can save you uh, on your primaries from using it all to mix. And so that was encouraging. I, I liked the option to use the con convenience colors and have it seem like it, um, like they didn't use a completely different set of primaries or like it, like it, it all went together. It didn't look like it was, um, it looked harmonious, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I love doing hard edge abstraction when I'm learning a new medium because it's original, but it's nobody owns geometry. You don't have to worry about anybody going, um, you copied somebody else. Of course I did. No one owns geometry, but the, the selections you make, where you place your colors, um, which, which spaces you combine and which ones you divide further all of those things you can play along play around with uh, the composition in that way and you can play around with um, just your color schemes and all of those choices make it your art so um, don't ever feel like you shouldn't do something like this because you've seen it done before your choices are going to make it your own and nobody nobody owns geometry right and so it's the perfect way to try stuff out and what I like to think of as sophisticated primitive <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense but I mean yeah you can get really um, you can get really intricate with your choices and one of the things I start doing in here in a little bit is um, instead of mixing the colors completely, I leave some streaks of the colors so that they don't mix completely. And it's interesting. It adds some interest. And I would imagine that you could go in and if you, if you did this in watercolor, you could probably ink over it and do all kinds of fun and funky things. Um, it would be pretty fun to do and um, a little groovy. Something I wanted to tell you is that I'm not using my good brushes for gouache. Uh, gouache, it will completely clean out of your brushes, right? But you don't need brushes that hold a lot of water when you're doing gouache. It's just not the same thing. I even played around with using a palette knife you could play around with using different textures just like you would with with acrylic like maybe taking a comb or something and and putting some texture in there there's one thing about the gouache is if you put it on too thickly it can crack and i, I got pretty thick with it but not that thick um, i i didn't experience any crack any cracking or anything like that while i was doing it um and it was really fun to use. I enjoyed being able to just have the open containers like that, which I really didn't think I was going to like that because I was really worried about it all drying out and getting crusty and gross. But I just kept spraying it down and stirring it up a little bit here and there and really didn't have any problem with it drying out very much while I was using it. One thing you can notice here is on the um, first page that has January on it, that side border, it doesn't look super even. And so I think maybe, I think maybe this gouache is not as opaque as it could be, unless you put quite a bit down. And then again, you're running into the idea that you might be, you might have a problem with it cracking or, or something like that. Um, so I think doing those, uh, 
Ghibli scenes and things like that, you don't, you're not doing what I'm doing here where you're just putting down a stripe of one color. So I think it would work great for experimenting with learning how to do those kinds of scenes. And uh, I, I think I would be very happy using it if it was the only gouache I had for using in my sketchbook and, you know, trying out different things. Um, I think the Hemi gouache is pretty cool. Uh, not like I've done a lot of gouache, but, you know, if you do a lot of art, you can tell if, even if it's a medium that you're not really familiar with, um, aside from maybe something completely different. Like if I went to oil paint, that would be really different. I don't think I could tell as easily for that, but for gouache, I, I feel like it's decent for what you're getting. It's incredible. I mean, where else are you going to pay 17 or 18 bucks and get 24 or 18 colors and um, be able to do all this with it, experiment around with it? It's pretty cheap. Honestly, I'm kind of amazed that, that it probably isn't that cheap now. I got it on sale, but anyway. Hey, I also really like this Paul Rubens sketchbook. Um, it's a little different. It's It seems to me that they're expecting you to only use one side of each sheet. Uh, they're perforated. Each sheet is perforated. And on the part of the paper that before it gets to the per per perforation um, on the opposite side the two pages are stuck together a little bit <clears throat> excuse me so it, it seems certain to me that that's what they're expecting and because they're perforated if you wanted to you could tear this out and frame it if you wanted to which I think is the intention I was able to do this in a couple of hours I mean I didn't even have to wait that long before I taped over the gouache to paint the next part. The only thing is you're going to use a lot of tape if you do this, but uh, because it's so much more viscous than watercolor, it's really necessary to tape it. Um, it's, it's too thick and viscous to be able to paint a smooth line. I don't, I, I wouldn't try to do it. I think taping it is the way to go. And that my friend is the end of the video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, I will see you in the next video. I'm not sure when that'll be, but hopefully soon. And you guys take, a take, take it easy and take care of yourselves. Bye-bye now. Smooches. Bye.